Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us in this Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Today, we'll be uh, presenting Beyond the Basics, working with the Action Recorder in AutoCAD 2017. So to begin, let's talk a little bit about us. Let's see if that's even working with the slide. There we go. All right, so about us. So first of all, our presenter today is Sarah Emsley from uh, our Lake Oswego, Oregon office. And she is an Autodesk technical support specialist here. And she's going to be doing a very interesting presentation for us. I'm Volker Coco. I'm also an Autodesk technical support specialist, also here in Lake Oswego. And then we have our uh, expert elite, Naman Mysorawala, uh, who will be joining us from Westchester. And we're always happy to have Naman aboard to help answer our questions moderating this session. Okay, so before we get started, um, as always, whether you're a new attendee or repeat attendee, uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. We'll answer those, not only as time allows, but on the fly if we can. Uh, this session will be recorded and the links will be made available. Now those links for the data set, for the webinar recordings, and for the um, uh, to register for additional webinars, are all in the reminder which you received in your email uh, one hour before this event and uh, one day prior to this event. If needed, we can always paste them in the uh, chat window. Uh, you'll also get a survey afterwards which will have these links available. And then feel free to download the data set or review the webinar recording. A little bit about our Autodesk Help webinar series for those of you who are new. Uh, we have been doing this for, I don't know, about a year and a half, maybe two now. And uh, we've had some very interesting topics. We have four different tracks. And as you can see on the left column, some of our upcoming topics, uh, our track for the third dimension is coming up next week with a 2D to 3D workflow. Then in April 21st, we're going to have another tips and tricks session in our track four. And then back to basics, an introduction to 2D drawing modification tools, followed by another beyond the basics session, working with constraints. So some good stuff coming up. Uh, we also have our previous webinars. As I mentioned earlier, uh, recorded, they're on our YouTube channel. Uh, check out that playlist. All these links are available in the slide deck that you'll be able to download. Don't forget, you can participate in future releases of AutoCAD, as well as providing feedback on current versions of AutoCAD in the customer council. And the links for that are in the right hand column there. So some good stuff there to get involved with, give your feedback. And of course, working in product support, our Autodesk Knowledge Network is something we can't neglect. Here you can get all kinds of, find resources for all kinds of stuff. Getting started with your product, learning and exploring, uh, finding downloads for that product. Uh, this could be service packs, hot fixes, uh, language packs, object enablers, etc. A lot more stuff there. Also troubleshooting resources can be found there. We provided a couple links to the AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT download page as well as to the trial version of AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT 2017. You can also get those on your Autodesk account. Uh, so those links have been provided as well. All right. This week's agenda is going to be about the action recorder. So the action recorder is a tool. If you've seen some of the previous webinars on creating macros, uh, basically using a text editor, the action recorder actually does this for you, recording the steps 
that you use to uh, work a particular workflow. Okay, so it's a very cool feature. These uh, uh, macros then will then be saved to the hard drive or a network resource. Uh, you can share those with users, use them for yourself, modify them as you need to. Uh, some very cool stuff here. So before we begin, I'm going to run a few polls. I know some of you are going not these polls again, but they are important to us. So the first one is uh, one that we have quite a bit of interest in, and that is, are, is this your first Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar? And the numbers, pretty, uh, pretty steady as they have in the past, about uh, close to 95% of you having attended prior to this. So that it's always great to see you people back. Uh, I mean that. And for those of you who are new attendees, welcome. We hope to make this a productive session for you. Let me share that real quick so that you can see who's here, who's been here. So some good numbers there for us. One more poll. If I can get my mouse to move where I need it to. All right, there we go. So uh, another important question for us is to know which release of AutoCAD you're using. These sessions are tailored uh, primarily for AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD users, uh, although what we show here can be done in the vertical applications, such as AutoCAD architecture, civil 3D, etc. cetera. Uh, so um, we do try to apply everything go to the core AutoCAD product. Uh, if it does not function in LT because LT does not have all the functionality of AutoCAD, uh, we do let you know. But uh, the action recorder is available in AutoCAD LT. So let's take a look at our results here. So quite a few of you are using AutoCAD, 38%, 29% LT, 20 using some of the verticals, well actually 32 using the verticals, Simple 3D and architecture, um, all vertical applications, and then 1% using other. So if you're using Revit, uh, Action Recorder is not going to work in that uh, particular application, but I um, uh, appreciate you being here. Okay, one more, and then we'll begin with our little webinar. And this one is, have you customized AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT or any of the verticals actually using macros? And if so, how have you done it? Okay, so it looks like about 17, 18 climbing a little bit, have used text-based macros. 73% nope. And some of you are going, what's a macro? Let's go ahead and close that and share those results for you. So uh, just briefly, uh, if you aren't aware of what a macro is, it's just a way of um, uh, being able to use multiple commands and functions in one command. Okay, so I need to maybe uh, create a layer, assign a color to it, and a line type, set it current. Okay, I don't want to have to go through all the prompts uh, afterwards, which I may want to insert a block on that layer. Okay, a lot of steps to do there. With a macro, we do it one time, and then we run that and it allows us to do all that in one command. And the action recorder does simplify that uh, dramatically. Okay, well, I wouldn't say it was dramatic, but it's pretty exciting stuff. So let's see how this works, all right? And since this is about the action recorder, ready, set, action, as I turn it over to Sarah. Okay, I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Are we okay, Volker? Common? 
Uh, right, I do need to uh, share, share the screen, let, I believe. Let me see. Give me one quick second, guys. All right. All right, let's pull up our AutoCAD 2017. Are we good for screen? Can everybody see yeah. my AutoCAD 2017? We're good. Okay, so hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Although I may work in the Oregon office, I'm originally from Hawaii, and so I want to give everyone a warm aloha. I know Volker and a couple of my colleagues in my office like to joke around that I'm from Hawaii. So I wanted to wish everyone a happy Thursday and aloha. And I was super excited to see that 73% of you actually don't use macros because I think the action recorder will be very useful for you. Like Volker said, we've done webinars in the past that are about writing macros, and you'll know that if you do write macros, they can be time consuming. And sometimes the smallest mistake can just delay the workflow, maybe a couple, an hour or 30 minutes or five minutes, depending on how advanced you are in writing macros. And the tool that I'm, I'm about to show you is an automated way to record all the commands that you would in the macro, but you're gonna be using your user interface to record these commands. So my first drawing, I'm going to demo what to find, I'm sorry, where to find the action recorder, where to find the defaulted action macros, what properties and settings are available, and finally, how to manage, save, and edit action macros. So let's go ahead and go to our ribbon and select our manage tab. And here you'll see our action macros. And in this drop-down menu, these are the action macros that have been previously recorded and are available to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select import lights. And I'm gonna come over to my action tree and open that up for you guys. And I'm gonna select that push pin so that I can dock it to the left of my screen. So in this action tree, you can tell, or you can see that all of these commands were previously recorded. And we can add additional information to previously recorded action macros by coming over here and hovering over these icons, you can see we can either insert a message, and that could be a reminder for you to add a certain amount of chairs to a drawing, or that you wanna send a reminder to another user that you'll be sending an action macro to. You can also select a base point and insert it. You would just need to select your node or command to insert a base point, or you can select pause for user input. And I will go into those a little bit later when creating a few action macros. But for now, let's just jump over to our manage action macros to take a look at it. So you'll see here I have two. And at the bottom, I have a description for this action macro, and it's just lights or five by six. And you can copy these, rename, modify. And I just went ahead and clicked modify to take a look at where the folder path that these action macros are saved at, and to show you that you can change these title names whenever you want, and or add any additional information. And I would definitely take a look at the standard checkbox options that we have here and check them as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the Action Macro Manager and let's just show you how it works. So for this drawing, I am gonna use being an interior designer as an example. In another life, I would feel like I would be this like superstar interior designer for the stars, and I'm just gonna live out that dream right now for this webinar. And so I'm an interior designer. I have multiple clients, maybe Carl Bass is one of them, and he has multiple drawing files, say maybe about 50. And he wants me to edit each file with new creative ideas for furniture or layouts. And in order for me to do that, I need to add a specific layer that's 
custom to my workflow and my company standards. And I'm going to show you how to create a new layer, set the layer to current, and assign a color to that layer. So we're going to go ahead and select record. I'm going to let AutoCAD catch up with my fast talking. And here we go. You can see that we're in the action recorder by the red dot next to my crosshairs. So I'm just going to go ahead and type out my command line. I'm going to type dash layer. And I want to make a new layer. So I'm going to go M for make. And I need to add a layer name. So I'm just going to call this interior design. I'm going to hit enter. And then I want to add a color to that layer. So I'm going to type in C, enter. And then I know specifically what color I want. It's like this bluish, greenish color. And then the number is 171. If you don't know the number of your color that you want to use, you can either use true color or color block. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter for that. And I need to assign my color to my new layer that I just created. So I need to go ahead and enter interior design and hit return. And then I'm going to hit return again to get out of the command. And so I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and click stop. Now I'm going to name my new action macro ID layer. And I'm just going to put in my description, add ideas and creative input as needed for Carl Bass on floor one. And I'm just going to go ahead and select OK. And let's check out if my action macro worked on this drawing first. And it did. So we're good to go on this drawing. It says interior design, and then there's my specific color that I want it, and it's set to current. Now I want to see if I can play it on a separate drawing file. And this is another drawing file that I have that I'm going to demo a little later. But I'm going to go ahead and select the Manage tab, make sure I have my new Action Macro selected, and I'm just going to go ahead and click Play. And then it says the playback of the action macro is complete. So I'm going to close that. Let's go double check at our layers properties. And there you go. So that worked out really well. And then let's move back to our floor plan sample drawing. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also use different ways to record commands. You can use the ribbon, toolbars. You can use the insert dialog box. And for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and use my tool palette to show you how you can create an action macro using your tool palette. Let me move this over a little bit. I'm going to undock my palettes to have it float for us. Actually, very good like that. So I have my tool palettes out, and then let's go ahead and select Manage at the ribbon, and then we're going to go and select Record of our Action Tree drop down, and then we're going to come over here, and we're going to select this chair. And I want to input it right there, but I don't know if I want to input it right there every single time. So I'm going to come up to my action recorder and I'm going to select pause for user input. And then I'm going to go ahead and place my chair there and I'm going to stop my command. So we'll just call this chairs. Add specs for each chair or floor one will be my description. We'll select OK. All right. And then let's see if we can play that back. So 
So we'll go ahead, select our chair, make sure we have our action tree pinned to the side. We'll take a look at that. We have our user prompt. You can tell it's right next to our specify insertion point. And then we'll just go ahead and play that. So automatically you'll see that the chair is on my crosshairs. And now maybe I want to put it in the corner in room 6100. And so I'll, play the, I'll place the chair there and our action macro is complete. So I just showed you how you can create an action macro for creating a new layer, setting it to current, assigning a color, or creating an action macro using your tool palettes. Now we're gonna move over to drawing number two. And I didn't go over where these action macros are saved or stored yet. So I wanna jump into that first. And you can get to where these action macros are recorded either by going through the manage action macros and then selecting options, or you can simply just type options at the command line. And once in options, we're gonna go to our files tab and we're gonna locate our action recorder settings. Our first path is gonna be our defaulted location where all your action macros that are recorded are saved there, and that's within your operating system. And then our second path is where you can point AutoCAD to any shared files. And I had a colleague of mine, John, help me out with the second drawing, and he had created a macro for me. So I went ahead and I pointed my AutoCAD to a shared folder where I could show you and demo the action macro that he created. And so let's go ahead and actually let's pop up and I'll put this in my, ex my Windows Explorer so I can show you where they live just to give you a visual. So there they are. I just copied and pasted that path into my Windows Explorer and it shows me a list of different action macros that I have currently saved to my system. And this is in a shared file. So let's click OK and then let's close out of this. And let's run John's action macro that he had sent me. So that will be import lights. And we are going to go ahead and play this. So as you can see, at the command line, it asks me to specify an insertion point. So I'm just going to come right here and specify my insertion point. Then it, the command line, it asks me to enter the number of rows. And I am going to say 5. And then it asks me to enter in the number of columns. And I'll say six. And then the distance between the rows, we'll say 12 feet. And then the distance between the columns, we'll just say six. And then I'm gonna hit enter. So our action macro is now complete. And so all of our lighting fixtures have been populated. So say that's one too many prompts for you. And you don't want to spend that much time to put in all that information when you know that that's going to be the same information for each floor plan for about 50 buildings. And you know all you want to do is put a prompt for where you want to insert the base point. So I'm going to show you how you can do that without having all those prompts. And we are just going to go ahead and hit record. We're going to wait for our red dot to appear next to our crosshairs. We're going to go ahead and select dash layer. And I want to assign my light fixtures to a specific layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and say type in S for set. And then I need to type in the layer that I want to set my light fixtures to. And that's A dash light. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the space bar to get out of that command. And then I want to insert that light fixture, which is block. So I'm going to go dash insert. And then it's the 2 by 4 traffer. Did I spell that right? Yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit that space bar. And now I need to pick an insertion point. I'm going to go ahead and pick an insertion point right there. 
And then I'm going to need to type in 1 for my x factor. And then I'm going to go ahead and type, in, type the space bar for my y. And then for my angle rotation, I'm just going to hit the space bar again. And then I'm just going to use the current default value. And so you'll see my light fixtures there. But now I want to fill the whole entire ceiling grid with my light fixture. And so I'm just going to go ahead and type in dash array, select my block, hit my space bar. I'm going to type in R for rectangular, hit my space bar. And then now I want seven rows. So this ceiling layout is a little bit bigger than the one I showed you before. Hit the space bar. Then I need eight columns. I still need them. 12 feet apart for the rows, and I still need them six feet apart for the columns. And there you go. So let's get out of this command. So I'll hit, and then I'll hit stop. And we'll just put in import lights, seven, eight. And this is the seven by eight. We'll hit OK, and that's going to save. And I actually forgot to add user input, input for my insertion point. So I'm going to come back and look through my action tree. And I want to select where I inserted that. And I'm going to actually put pause for user input. Because it may change, even though we're doing the same function, it may change depending on what drawing file I'm in. So, I am going to select my new action macro. I'm going to hit play. It should ask me, yep, there, there's my block. And it's at, at the command line, it's asking me to pick an insertion point. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And there you go. My action macro is now complete. So with that said, I've showed you a couple different ways to create action macros. And you can get as simple or as detailed as you want. I think that's the fun part of it. And you don't have to write a whole entire macro out. Sometimes these using the action recorder is best for simple, repetitive tasks. And I'm open to polls and, and or any questions. Poker? Yeah, we have um, a, uh, a somebody's few, asking is can you, you uh, Namant, can you uh, uh, take a look and see what we have going with that? I'm trying to set something up for one particular question in the um, in um, the, uh, so the, the one chat. question was how do you add a macro to a tool palette? If that's a possibility, uh, and the the, uh, the other question I'll ask. If you are when you're done, I would. I'm going to let Volker take that for adding a macro to the tool palette. He's a he's my macro guru. Okay. The second question um, would be: Is that um, can you repetitively apply a macro to multiple drawings, uh, in like in Script Pro or something like that as a script? Okay. So the ma a macro is going to be nothing like uh, but a command. So um, I have not tried it in a script, but seeing as how it is a command, if you have the script running and just like any other command, you should be able to insert that command into the script as long as it's in the path, uh, uh, which has been applied in the options dialog. That um, excuse me, lost my train of thought, that should work. But again, I have not tried it. Do we have, Do we have any, any more, more questions, Navin? Um, yeah, I'm looking through the uh, system here. Um, it says, can we use another macro while recording a new one? 
the macro within the macro, basically? That's a good question. Um, Sarah, why don't you try creating something like that real quick? Um, okay, let me finish this up, and then we'll do that. I am going to demonstrate here in a moment um, placing a macro on a palette. So I'm just trying to complete that. So uh, I'm hoping the mod can uh, kill some time. OK, let, okay, let me stop screen. showing my screen so that you can show yours. Give me a second. So in general, some people ask, like, uh, why do I want to use an action macro, or why do I even want to use macros in the first place, and how it can speed up my drawing. So um, macros allow you to basically uh, kill your repetitive tasks you, that you do. Sometimes uh, back in the days when an action macro recorder wasn't there, um, I used Lisp. So if I did something more than two, three times, um, I would write a quick Lisp routine for it. Uh, same would be in this case would be if I have to do it more than two or three times, I would record an action and then repeat that action and or share it with my company. So if you do something constantly or you are getting questions uh, asked by your employees saying, hey, how do I do this constantly or how do I create this layer all the time with the right setting, uh, as Sarah showed, how you can share macros within the office as well uh, using uh, the options under files and then additional locations. Yeah, so just to add to that, my general rule has always been if I'm going to do it more than uh, uh, two times, so if I know I'm going to use it at least three times, do something, a repetitive task of some type, then I am going to automate that. And whether that is using a macro that I've created from a, uh, a text uh, a file or using a macro command or VBA or Visual Lisp, uh, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spend time being repetitive if I can automate it. Okay, so I am going to share my screen here because we had a couple of people ask similar questions. And just waiting to make sure that we can see it. OK, so one of the questions we had was, can I um, run a, uh, an action macro from the command, pro uh, command line? And if so, do I need to put a, um, a hyphen in front of it because the action macro manager has a dialogue? Okay, the other question was, can I add an action macro to my tool palette? So I've created a, a, just a very, very basic macro. I've called it V1 just because I'm rather lazy and didn't want to get into a long description. Uh, all this does is draw a rectangle in a circle uh, and places it at a predetermined spot. So I didn't do anything fancy with it. But if I just type in V1 at the command line, it does exactly what I told it to do. Now, because this is a command, I can also add that to a tool palette. And the easiest way to do this is just to go into the CUI command or use the customize uh, right mouse click option uh, on the um, uh, quick CUI editor. And I'm just going to drag uh, an existing command. It doesn't matter what that command is onto my palette. Okay, I'm not going to use this command, but I'm going to modify it. This is probably one of the easiest ways to do this. Um, I'll just call this rec circle, <laughs> and I could put a description in whatever. I'm not going to. I'm going to cancel out of any other command. That's what the control C, control C does. And I typically add a third one. I'm not going to in this case. But I cancel out of any command, and I'm going to type V1, which is the name of the macro. So I'll click OK. 
and I could have changed the image up here, whatever, but there's my um, um, uh, command. And as I click on that, it runs that macro. So you can certainly use this to um, uh, create some macros, have them readily available uh, at the uh, on your palettes, uh, you could actually place those on your ribbon if you're customizing that. Run it from the command line like any other command. And yes, if you are um, uh, creating a macro, you can run another macro within it just by assigning the command to the user input option of a macro. So. Hopefully that clears up some of the questions we have there. And I would encourage you, I mean, anytime you do anything that you have to automate, um, if you aren't comfortable customizing, uh, writing code, even simple code such as a macro, uh, the action recorder is a great way to automate something uh, that you are going to use on a repeat basis. Awesome explanation. Uh, I think you went beyond the box on that. Uh, how do you insert that uh, a macro onto a tool palette? Uh, I was looking for a direct way, but uh, that's where you know the hacking skill come in play <laughs> to kind of go through a different <laughs> so, route to get what you needed to do. So it's a, you know it's not really hacking or anything. But look, if if you're new to customization, we do have other webinars which show how to customize your tool palettes, how to customize your ribbon. Uh, the recordings are all available on YouTube. The data set is available on our download site uh, in the script. And, and this recording as well is going to be available. Although what I just did here is not part of the script that Sarah has put together. So uh, you may want to review those other um, webinars we've done or the script that goes with it because it explains it in detail. Yeah, I've posted some links uh, on the chat window uh, for some of the uh, previous webinars and the link to the uh, YouTube channel as well. Yeah, that's, thank you, Naman. That, that's awesome. Uh, I do want to shout out a quick apology here. Uh, my mistake, I had meant to mention it at the beginning when I was talking about how we tailor our webinars for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. Uh, and I neglected to mention that the action re re macro recorder is not available in AutoCAD LT. And uh, I, in fact, I may have misspoke, but um, it is not available in AutoCAD LT. This, this is more of an AutoCAD session or a vertical session. But, um, and, and I know most of the uh, AutoCAD LT users have either sat there in stunned silence watching the video or there you've left and gone to lunch. So, <laughs> my my belated apologies to them. Thank you for everyone who stuck around too. I appreciate your time. Anything else, Naman? I've uh, closed my chat window, so. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through uh, some of that again, just uh, making sure. Okay. And um, there. Were we showed how to do macros within a macro, uh, correct? And um... uh, not in this session. And um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm just not uh, quite prepared for that right now at this moment because oh, okay, okay. I personally have not worked with the Mac Action Macro Recorder in a few years. So um, oh, okay. uh, I will admit it. I'm a failure. Um, well, it might be nice uh, to do a proactive post and and show that how how you can nest macros or even run a script across a couple drawings. It is possible to do that. Yes. Um, it's sort of hit or miss sometimes, um, but it it does work, and it might might be good to put in a uh, proactive post. So, um, and, and by the way, everybody, this is John Velick, uh, the newest member of our webinar team. I uh, neglected to uh, introduce him earlier as well. Uh, he uh, was actually a surprise um, 
guest star today. Uh, but that is a good idea. We'll actually uh, we'll throw together a um, secondary uh, uh, recording uh, showing how to do that. We'll throw that up on our screencast page, but we'll provide the link in the uh, data set download as well as a comment on the YouTube page where we post the original uh, recording of this session. Uh, just briefly, I do want to run one more uh, poll real quick before everybody leaves us. And then I would like to uh, just share some resources that we've made available uh, for you today. So this is the biggest question of all. And that is, have you gained anything out of this webinar? Those aren't the exact words. But did you learn anything new? It looks like um, at least over 90% of you have have learned something new, which is awesome. Uh, we don't like wasting your time. Uh, so we're really happy to hear that this has been productive. Uh, apologies to those who did not learn anything uh, in this session, but hey, hopefully, maybe, perhaps we've kept you entertained or given you that hour-long break from your regular job where you're able to just kick back. So uh, let me just close that real quick, like show you the results, and then I want to show you some uh, resources. So I just briefly show you the results there. Sometimes it's more tangible when you can see it, uh, as opposed to me just talking about it. All right, so let's uh, take a look at uh, the PowerPoint. There's some additional information about customization here and work with the action recorder links to uh, a lot of AutoCAD help. Um, but um, Heidi Hewitt from the AutoCAD Insider blog has a great uh, video recording of working with the action recorder. And then I've provided a link to one of the um, macro automation uh, webinars that we held where everything is pretty much done using a text file, which can be done in AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So uh, it's it's more old school, but it gets the job done. And yeah, some good stuff there. So we also have some additional um, resources on this link as well. So we want to thank you for joining us. You can email us questions or leave them in our forum. And if you do email us a question, uh, please be sure to put in there subject line build your AutoCAD IQ because we do have several teams uh, who are presenting webinars and we want to make sure your question gets to the right team. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all I really have to say here. Um, any, anything else that came up while I was out? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your time. I, we're going to give you guys back some time, so about maybe 15, 20 minutes. So enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks for staying and listening. I appreciate it. Have a good one.